In this video, I'll uncover the difference between fasting and calorie restriction. I have people tell me all the time that fasting and calorie restriction or eating less is pretty much the same thing. And then some people tell me that the only reason you get results with fasting is because of the calorie restriction. Now these statements are obviously very inaccurate, so that's what we're going to break down in this video. We're going to talk about fasting versus eating less, and we're going to talk about really the difference when it comes to how it acts on your body. What will happen if you're fasting? What will happen if you're eating less? And so we'll break all that down in this video, so stick around to the end. But before we get started, I'm Dr. Zorowski, and welcome to the channel. If you're new to the channel, it's a pleasure to have you here. Be sure to subscribe, hit that bell notification, and join our notification community. That way it can help you excel your health and your life. Let's go ahead and jump in here and let's talk about muscle mass because this is something that comes up quite a bit. Many people say, well, if you're doing intermittent fasting, you're starving yourself. And as a result, what will happen is you will actually start to lose muscle mass because if you actually want to gain muscle mass, you need to you know, eat six small meals a day and kind of get into that cycle, right? Work out more. Well, let's talk about the facts here, okay? So fasting versus calorie restriction. In the Journal of the International Association for the Study of Obesity, what they did is they took a group of individuals and over a three to 12 week period, they studied the difference between fasting and calorie restriction. Now, what they found in the individuals is that they had similar fat mass loss, okay? So it didn't really matter if they were fasting or doing calorie restriction, they kind of lost the same amount of weight. And I'll get more into the details of that further in this video, so stick around to the end. Now, the next thing that they found here is intermittent fasting retained lean muscle mass. Okay, so this is really important. So basically, if you're doing intermittent fasting, it's a great way to maintain lean muscle mass. In You're going to lose fat during this process, but maintain the muscle. Now, when you look at many gym gurus out there, when you look at many celebrities out there, they use intermittent fasting as a way to stay lean, but also maintain muscle mass. There's full workout programs that are built on this method right here. So it's a really important uh, thing here to understand that if you're doing intermittent fasting, you'll maintain the lean muscle mass, but you'll lose the fat. And it's not the same thing when you're doing calorie restriction, because when doing calorie restriction, in most cases, people, they're going to lose weight, but they also almost always go and lose muscle mass with that. So very important when it comes to trying to lose weight and what is going to happen with the muscle. Let's go ahead and talk about metabolism, because this is really important too. I hear all the time, well, if you're doing intermittent fasting, you're starving yourself, and you're going to wreck your metabolism, you have to be careful, right? Well, let's go ahead and talk about the facts here. And first, we're going to do fasting versus calorie restriction. They did a review of studies. And what they found it was short-term fasting. What it was going to do is increase norepinephrine growth hormone and a lot of very positive hormones. Now, what it was going to do from there is it was going to improve the metabolism. And they found in the study that fasting improved the metabolism between 3.6% and 14% in individuals. Okay, so this is looking at short-term fasting. Okay, now if we're doing long-term fasting, long-term calorie restriction, they both will likely go in and decrease our metabolism a little bit. But any type of short-term fasting, intermittent fasting on a daily basis, alternate day fasting, um, doing like a three-day water fast, these all have actually shown to improve your metabolism, which was really important because they're making these m metabolic hormones more sensitive. They're making them function more appropriately in the body. And the truth is, at the end of the day, it's going to actually boost your metabolism, which is great, whereas calorie restriction tends to actually have a slow decline in the metabolism. An example of that is this show that they used to do on TV, and it's called The Biggest Loser. As a matter of fact, they may still be doing it. I don't know. But The Biggest Loser, what they were doing is putting these people on severe calorie-restrictive diets. And as a result, when they got done with the show, when they got done with the diet, essentially, they went and gained all the weight back. If you look at the, the history of the the people who are actually participating in that show, like most of them gained all the weight back and like 10% more. So what happens is that when you're doing that calorie restriction, you basically are wrecking your metabolism and it's very hard to actually fix it after that. So we have to be very careful. Fasting is a safe bet when it comes to 
trying to improve your metabolism. So like I said, all the methods I uh, mentioned there are going to be very positive for boosting that metabolism up. Let's talk about weight loss because this is a reason that a lot of people want to try intermittent fasting. They see these different pictures on the internet and before and after people lost all this weight. Let's talk about if it's healthy or not because a lot of people, like I said, when it comes to losing weight, it's like, well, you need to eat six small meals a day. You need to do calorie restriction and you know, fasting is not the best method is what we oftentimes hear. Let's talk about it. The Journal of the International Association for the Study of Obesity, they did a calorie restrictive diet versus an alternate day fasting system here. What they did it for was 24 weeks long and they found that there was a slight increase in the weight loss with the fasting group, okay? So basically what they found is that like whether it was calorie restriction or it was fasting, they really had about the same amount of weight loss, okay? Next, what they did is the fasting group, they looked at them a little bit further, okay? Because the details are what really matter here. The fasting group lost two times more visceral fat. This is the fat that's considered to be dangerous. The fat that leads to heart disease, the fat that leads to diabetes. They were actually losing more of that fat than the people who were doing the calorie restriction. Now the other thing that they found here is that they actually maintained their lean muscle mass, which I had mentioned. Okay, So they went in, they lost a whole bunch of the really bad fat on the body, they maintained their muscle mass, so fasting worked much better than calorie restriction. And so when it comes to weight loss, fasting is a really great method for not only the reason we're talking about specifically here, but the other ones I just mentioned as well. And then of course, this one that we're about to jump into next, and that is hunger, okay? So fasting versus calorie restriction when it comes to hunger. The Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism have a study on this, and what they had is 33 subjects, and after three days of fasting, what they found is that they had decreased ghrelin levels, okay? Okay. Now, if you're not familiar with this metabolic hormone, it's essentially the hormone that tells you to eat, okay? Whenever you get that big craving that you're hungry, it's probably because ghrelin is really high. Now, what they found in this study is that it, over the three days of fasting, it slowly decreased, okay? And even at the end of the study, when the, the subjects were done fasting, they were reporting that they weren't that hungry. They were saying, well, you know, I feel like my stomach shrunk. I just don't feel like eating as much. And so it was really great. So not only do you actually improve your metabolism, but also you decrease hunger. Now, if you're somebody who is familiar with doing calorie restriction for, let's say, cutting or doing it for the purpose of maybe you're going to go on a weight loss competition or even um, doing some sort of gym competition, a lot of times what you can have a problem with is after doing severe calorie restriction, you can have severe hunger issues that you just cannot get rid of. And so, this is even why people who do things like The Biggest Loser, they have severe hunger issues that they just don't know how to deal with. And then when we look at fasting, it's actually doing the opposite, okay? So this hormone ghrelin, like I said, it was actually decreasing throughout the whole process of fasting, and they basically find time and time again, whether it's alternate day fasting, intermittent fasting, three-day fasting, you're going to find ghrelin start to decrease and have a complete balance of metabolic hormones, not only ghrelin, but also insulin and the other ones involved, and as a result, you get better results and you decrease hunger. Now, the other thing too is it's very important to make sure sure that when we talk about fasting that you're actually doing it properly and when you're doing fasting that you're going in and making sure you're not breaking your fast okay because we don't want to have our fast turn into a calorie restriction and so if you're not familiar with you know how to do intermittent fasting what I'll do is I'll put a link to a complete guide I'll put it right up here it teaches you everything you need to know because as I mentioned before you run the risk of falling into that mode of calorie restriction falling into that mode of starvation if you wake up in the morning and let's say you have a coffee and you fill it full of a whole bunch of stuff that actually is breaking your fast and there's a lot of misinformation out there and many people are unknowingly breaking their fast and as a result they're not getting the benefits it has to offer in order to get the benefits of fasting you actually have to be doing the fast properly. And so when in doubt, as I always mention, make sure that you just stick to water because we know that water is not going to break your fast. So if, you, if there's anything um, that you're putting in during your fast 
and you're concerned whether or not it's breaking it, just get rid of it and stick to water. I mean, for me personally, I see so many people trying to sneak little things in here and there, and as a result, they're just not doing a proper fast. And if you wanna see like a full 60 day meal plan around fasting and get more on my fasting program, I'll put a link in the description below here. Also, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and also let me know in the comment section here. Give me some feedback. Calorie restriction versus fasting. Have you tried them? Which one worked better? And also share with me some of the results that you've gotten with fasting. I'd love to know that. All in the comments section here and I'll get back to you. Also be sure to uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet. Subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification so that you can learn more about intermittent fasting, weight loss, reversing health conditions, and everything that you want to know to improve your health. And then lastly, check out these videos because these ones will certainly help you improve your health. I'll see you in the next video.